Welcome back everybody, hope you're doing well. Today we're doing a fun little project that I've been planning for a while. I basically want to make a mini indoor pond, almost like a miniature version of the big shallow aquarium. Yeah, I'm excited, let's get started. Regular viewers of the channel will know that I've recently got rid of my big shallow aquarium and I've replaced it with this 90 centimeter standard size tank. Now, if you've never seen a big shallow before, I will overlay some clips of that tank. I had it for two years and it had three different layouts. And my favorite one was the one with all the wood sticking out. And that's the one that I kind of want to sort of recreate today, but on a very small scale. And this is the tank that I want to use for this project. So as you can see, it's like a little shallow tank and it almost has the exact same dimensions or shape as the big shallow. But this one is slightly different because it's um, the bottom glass panel is raised. So it almost looks like the tank itself is floating. So really nice optic white, yeah, clear tank. I got this one from F-Zone. F-Zone is one of my channel sponsors. I'll tell you more about them later, but if you wanna pick one of these up yourself, I will leave a link in the video description. Okay, so we have ourselves a tank. Next thing we need is a light. And for that, I wanna use this light. I found this one digging through my supplies. This is an AquaGrow Unique Nano. It's a pretty old light. I don't think this brand even exists anymore, but the light still works just fine. It's very similar to a Chihiro C2, and I will leave a link to that light in the video description if you're interested. I also found this clamp. This is from an actual Chihiro C2, so we can use this clamp to attach the light to the glass. And we have light. I think it looks pretty good. We might even be able to raise the light a little bit more or lower it depending on how the uh, hardscape turns out, but for now it's okay. So let's get started on the hardscape. So of course it's gonna be impossible to make a one-on-one -on -one copy of the Big Shallow. We don't really have the same materials. It's a completely different size as well. So we're just gonna go for a triangular style layout with wooden rocks. So I found some really nice uh, small piece of serious stone. In the Big Shallow I was using black lava, but I want a little bit more contrast. So we're gonna go for a gray rock. And then I also have some really nice pieces of wood. This is called a uh, scaper root. It's basically like a black version of the regular spider or red more wood. I really like using this stuff. I've already used it a couple times and some pieces still have some white glue marks on them, but that's okay. We can cover it up later with plants. So yeah, let's see if we can come up with a nice layout in here. Okay, so let's see. I think I want to go for a triangular style coming from, from this side because the light is facing this way as well. So we can kind of have it go down to the right side. So let's see if we can come up with something. Here we go. I think that looks pretty good. We have a nice, nice line to it. Some nice pieces underwater, some nice pieces coming out of the water. Yeah, let's see if we can um, make it even better with some of these rocks. Okay, I wasn't really planning on adding this many rocks, but I just kept stacking them and stacking them and it kept looking better and better, so I just uh, continued. Yeah, I think that's the hardscape pretty much done. Um, the, the rocks also kind of have a function besides just looking pretty. I also want them to kind of stop the substrate from rolling forward because in the back here, I want to kind of fill in these areas with some plant substrate. We're going to have quite a few plants growing immersed, so I want to make sure that they get a proper amount of nutrition. So. Yeah, I'm quite happy with the hardscape like this. We're gonna have some cosmetic sand in the foreground, so we need to make sure that we have a, a good barrier. So we still have quite a few gaps between all the rocks and the wood, and I wanna fill it up with some of this white filter floss. So I'm just gonna take a little bit with my tweezers and just kind of wedge that, well, let's see, for example, in here. Just like so. So right now that's still visible, but of course we're gonna cover it up with some plants, with some, some sand and some small gravel. So later on we'll not be able to see it anymore, but for now, it's just going to make maintenance a lot easier. If you have all this plant substrate constantly rolling forward, sp uh, sp spilling on top of the sand, it's just going to make maintenance horrible. So this way, yeah, we just make things a lot easier. So this is how it looks right now from the back. So as you can see, I've used quite a bit of the filter floss. That's okay, it doesn't really have any negative effect or anything. 
and it's just going to make our, our life a lot easier. Let's see how it looks from the front. So we still have quite a quite a big gap there and you can kind of see the filter floss but nothing a uh, plant will not fix. I think we can uh, we can now add in the substrate in the back. So I found some leftover aqua soil. This is the Daniel Escaper soil. And I think this is perfect for this little setup because this stuff doesn't, it still has nutrients, but not too much, you know, like, not like ADA Amazonia, for example. I think if we use a very nutrient rich substrate in here, we might run into some algae issues because we have pretty strong light. And I'm also going to run the light for like 12 hours a day or something, so quite long, quite a long photo period. So I think if we have a very nutrient rich substrate, then we're probably going to get some algae in the, uh, in the aquatic section, which I want to avoid. So I think this stuff is perfect. Okay, substrate is in. As you can see, it's almost all the way to the top. It's kind of like you see in, in a natural pond, you know, you have the water area and then to the sides you always have this sort of like a swamp area where you have all the grasses and the, you know, the, the big plants growing out. So I think that's good. Um, I was thinking about gluing everything. Normally in all my aquascape setups, I glue all the hardscape together, but I think in this case it's not really necessary. I mean, this piece of wood is firmly held in place by the rocks. Same goes for this one. And these two pieces are still quite loose, but we can kind of move them around still. And it kind of also depends on the plants, which plants we're going to use and how, where we're going to position them. We still have some flexibility, you know? So I think let's, let's add in the cosmetic sand and then we can start planting. So I'm thinking of using this sand mix. It's like a sand and gravel mix that I've used before. I think this will match nicely with the rocks that we've used. So yeah, let's uh, give this a try. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I think it looks really good. Love this sand and gravel mix. Really matches well with the rocks. Looks super natural. Of course, we're going to add in more water later. You can kind of see that the, the table is not really level, but yeah, we'll fix that later. So I'm going to add in more, le uh, more water later. First, I want to add in the plants. Okay, I've just finished preparing all the plants. Of course, as always, I've ordered way too much. Kind of went a little crazy again, but that's okay. If we have some leftover, we can always use that in different projects. Got a few more cool things coming up, so nothing will get wasted. If you're thinking of doing something like this yourself, you also don't really have to order this many plants. It's just, uh, it's just what I like to do, you know? So we'll start planting and then we'll just go over every single plant in a little bit more detail as I'm planting them. Now, if you are thinking of creating something like this, then this is the plant that you should absolutely 100% get. This plant should definitely be on your list. This is Pogostomon erectus. Some people also call it Pogestamon decanensis. And this plant has some, well, we'll get some really beautiful flowers. But that might, might take a while, but it's definitely worth the wait. We'll get some really beautiful purple, purple flowers. Okay, the next up, a plant that I've never used before. I think this is actually a terrarium plant as well. So yeah, that's why I've never used it before. I only stick to aquatic plants. But I thought this was, it would, would be cool in here. This is a type of Acorus. I think it's Acorus pumilus, something like that. But yeah, I thought this plant kind of would work well in here, so let's give it that a go. In front of that I'm going to plant some Lobelia Cardinalis Mini. At the moment it's still quite green, but I think with this quite a strong light it should turn a, a decent red color, so I think that would be nice for some contrast. I'm also going to plant some on this side. Then over here in front of the Pogestamon I'm going to plant some Hygrophila Araguaya. I could only find this plant as an in vitro pot, so at the moment it's very small. So it's going to take a little while before it shows its true color, its true form. But um, again, this plant is going to grow some really nice flowers as well. Also a little purple-bluish. Purple okay, I still have a little gap between the Pogestamon and the Lobelia over here. It's on this side. And here I'm going to plant some Hygrophila pinatifida. I really love how this plant looks underwater. But I think above water it's gonna look pretty cool as well. Yeah, I think that's all the plants for the immersed section. I actually have a few more types, but yeah, I simply don't really have enough space. Wasn't really sure what, how much space I would have, how much hardscape I was gonna use, but I think this is perfect. So now we can actually fill up the, the tank all the way to the top, add a little bit more water, then add some plants in the aquatic section as well. Over here I got a really small crypt. This is the Crypt Lutea Hobbit. 
I think this will look really nice in this aquatic section. So maybe one in the corner here, and then maybe another one on this side. And then always try to use uneven numbers, so one smaller one somewhere here. I still have a little bit of empty space over there, and I think this plant, this is Marsalea, I think this will actually work there, you can kind of grow immersed as well, but there's no substrate there, so I'm just going to fill in a little bit of substrate, and then add this Marsalea. Now something you really can't skip in a layer like this is a little bit of moss. So I got this really rare booster Flanderen moss. Had this for a while, but I think it will suit really well here because it has a very vibrant green color. Okay then, I think that's the planting done. Really happy with that. Just did a little small water change as well, so the water is nice and clear. I love how that looks. A little view from the top as well. I just imagine purple flowers coming from there. Everything is going to be a little bit taller and just more vibrantly colored. I'm just thinking if we should add some floating plants. For example, in the desk aquarium over there, I have some beautiful redwood floaters. I'm not sure if that's going to work in here, but. Let's just give it a try. I have quite a lot in here, but there's also some duckweed in here and I don't want any, any duckweed in there. But maybe we can kind of just pick it out and clean it off. Yeah, I think those red floats were a nice addition. So I think we're done now. I'm really happy with the, with the end result. So the majority of the plants that we've used for the immersed section are of course aquatic plants and yeah, aquarium plants can grow above water as well but they do need a little bit more humidity. So I'm going to be spraying them at least, at least once per day until they kind of transition to this new environment. Besides that, I think it should be a very low maintenance setup. And before I show you guys how this tank looks in a few weeks from now, just a quick word from today's sponsor. Quick little break just to thank the sponsor of today's video and that is F-Zone. Regular viewers of the channel will know that I've been working with F-Zone for a while now. I really like the products that they offer and I like that they ship internationally. I have a lot of viewers, you guys from all over the world. And for me it's important that the products that I'm using are available to you guys as well. So if a company ships internationally then for me that's a huge bonus. So I've already shown you guys a lot of their products, uh, CO2 regulators, stainless steel canister filters, auto top of systems. So I'll leave the Epson website in the video description. Don't forget to check that out. And also don't forget to use my discount code. MJ Amsterdam gives you 10% off and like an easy way to support the channel as well. So end of the commercial break, back to the video. It has now been roughly three weeks since I made this little mini pond and I'm really enjoying it. I wasn't sure if I should add any livestock to this setup, but I thought just for the video I can add a few shrimp. If they don't do well in here, I can always take them out. The plants have grown quite a bit already and I've completely stopped spraying them. All I've done in the past three weeks is a couple of water changes and on this small setup that only takes a few minutes. I think it's going to take a few more months for this little mini pond to really show its true potential and hopefully some flowers as well. But I couldn't wait that long and had to share this with you guys. As always, if you enjoyed this video, then do me a favor and smash that like button. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.